And, uh, you know, you start with Anthony Barr. You remember last year, yesterday we were leaving here at 10 o'clock. Man, it was great. You had Mosley, you had Barr, you had Assembly, you had Crowder, you had Bellamy. And the, Jet, and the Jets were looking at uh, Paredes from uh, Denver, possibly. Uh, they, were, they were in on Le'Veon Bell. And everything was great in the Jet world. Yeah. And then, of course, late in the afternoon, you find out that Anthony Barr basically backs out of uh, the, the Jet deal and decides to remain in Minnesota. I you know, and, and, and it's it's amazing watching, like, all the reaction to, like, what happened to Antonio Brown, what happened to Odell Beckham Jr. last night, and what happened with uh, Anthony Barr. Could you imagine if a team did to Anthony Barr what Anthony Barr did to the Jets? Oh, man. Could you imagine if the Jets said, you know what, well, we kind of got an agreement, but we're going to back out on you. Goodbye. We don't want you. <laughs> Could you imagine if that would happen the other way around? And then teams that were interested in that player signed somebody else and couldn't get back in on that player. Right. It, you know, and it's kind of interesting. Then when Odell Beckham Jr. gets traded, I even saw, like, I think it was uh, Jamal Adams said, oh, you know, uh, no loyalty. Well, why should there be? Why should there be any loyalty if the players are going to act the way the players are acting in some of these cases? And I think Antonio Brown being the case where it shows you got to be really careful who you're who you're signing here. All right, here. So let's start with Odell Beckham Jr. He, here's the thing: you and I have been talking about this for months now. I, I believe that they the Giants actually sold high in this case. They got more than the Steelers got for Antonio Brown, and they got more than the uh, Raiders got for uh, for Amari Cooper, and a higher draft pick, by the way. So Dave Gettleman sold high here, knowing a couple of things. One. I do not believe that uh, Odell Beckham Jr. wants to play another year with Eli Manning. I, I don't believe he wants to go down that road. Number two, Odell Beckham Jr. the last two years has been oft injured. And I do believe the last four games of last year in which he didn't play because he had a contusion in his leg, I believe that set off some, uh, you know, some alarms within the Giants building over there, and they weren't happy with him. Number three, he goes on with Lil Wayne and ESPN and basically wonders aloud as to whether or not he likes playing here in New York and questions his quarterback openly. Number four, he gets on his all fours in Philadelphia and acts like a dog in the end zone. Number five, he makes a, uh, you know, a, a, a marriage proposal to the kicking net. Uh, number six, he gets into that huge fight with Josh Norman, acting like an idiot on the field. Let's not forget about Paris and well, the pizza uh, well, I'm, and I'm the potential drugs. So, and so, so you have Paris and the pizza. You also have the boat trip down to Miami before yes. the Green Bay playoff game. I mean, I mean, enough is a freaking enough. I don't care how good you are. It's tolerance and it's production. His production the last two years, due in large part to injuries and because he decided to take himself out, he is the all-hype team. This is an all hype guy that is basically, uh, uh, you know, a fruitcake when it comes to being a part of a team. And, you know, maybe some of his teammates are going to miss him. Always so great. I think he's more hyped than anything. <laughs> yeah. I well, mean, it's unbelievable. So I am, I'm, look, I'm all in with David Gettleman on this one. I, you know, you and I have been talking about this for months and months I mean, months I said it yesterday. I said trade Odell Beckham Jr., cut Eli Manning, draft a quarterback, go in for a full rebuild. The problem is, though, and I am on board with this deal, and I don't think the return's as bad as everybody else is talking about. I think that's pretty decent return for Odell Beckham Jr. The problem is they're a year late. This is the issue, and this is where Dave Gettleman's going to get criticized and has been getting criticized, is they didn't have, as an organization, Gettleman and others, didn't have the foresight to say, we're going to stink in 2018, we need to do this stuff now. Now, they discussed about trading Odell Beckham Jr. They did not. Instead, they signed to a contract extension, so now they have to eat $16 million in dead cap money. They still don't have the quarterback of the future. They still have Eli Manning on their roster, and they're a mess. Just think about the great position they would be in if they realized this last year. And by the way, you know, the, the league year starts this afternoon, so we're just actually getting started in the 2019 league year. So this is really the beginning, and this is the first, you know, I wouldn't say the first move because they, they've already, you know, let Landon Collins go, and he signs a huge deal with Washington. They traded Olivier Vernon to the Cleveland Browns for uh, Eric Zeitler, and I do believe that that's probably where this whole thing started, yeah. maybe with Odell Beckham Jr. It might even started before that. But at the end of the day, when you really think about all the nonsense that Odell Beckham Jr. created around the Giants, the money that they gave him, and then the fact that he is injured a lot and doesn't play in every game, 
I'm, I'm looking at this going like Dave Gettleman did the right thing. Right. He made and, a little bit too late. I mean, they sh- they should have they shouldn't have signed him to the deal because now you got to deal with the dead cap stuff and all of that. But yes, I and mean, this is why we kept bringing it up because after the contract, and let's not forget. Everybody that was talking about whether to give him the money or not give him the money was talking about his prior behavior. Then all of a sudden, Odell Beckham Jr. was perfect. He was showing up to practice. He wasn't saying anything. He looked great after the injury in 2017. Look, he's a changed man. He matured like most of us do as we get older. He's maturing. It's time for him to get the money. And then all of a sudden, it was another 180 from the new mature Odell Beckham Jr. And he's sitting next to Little Wayne saying he's not sure if New York is the place to be when the Giants just made him the highest paid wide it's receiver just, in football. You don't understand. So you re- things change. <clears throat> Internally, the... the level of pain in the ass is like at an all-time high it's like a 10 right and it's just too much work it's too much work for pat Sherman. do you think pat Sherman wants to get up there and talk post practice or post game about one individual's comments somewhere else no other than on the field and i'm so sick and tired of hearing about oh how hard a guy works you know i'm sorry i'm paying 18 million dollars work hard i should that's that's the least i should get out of you sure i know you know at the end of the day you know he created a firestorm uh, he is all hype. You know, there there is a good football player in there somewhere. There's a competitive football player in there somewhere. I have lauded him at times when he is out on the field where you could see that he is a difference maker. But at the end of the day, how many games has he missed? How many problems has he created? And, and the internal aspect of from the head coach's standpoint, from the ownership standpoint, from the general manager standpoint, how much crap are you going to put up with? Yep. I'm sorry. It's, I could say the same thing about the Steelers and Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. One of the big questions around Dave Gettleman right now, and I hear it everywhere, is what is his plan? What is the plan right now? And to me, it's an easy answer. The plan has changed. And because the plan has changed and because they thought they were going to be better last year, they're in a little bit of a mess. But last year in 2017, they believed that they could rebuild quickly from a horrendous year the year before. They had to fire the coach and guys are getting hurt and guys are leaving and everything else and quitting midseason and the defensive backfield's a disaster. They thought that they could quickly go from worst to first in the NFL because it's been done before and Eli had something left in the tank. We're going to beef up the offensive line and we're going to be good. They were wrong. They were dead wrong, and they realized it. That's why there was a purge middle of the season where they traded away, guys. That's why you're seeing what you're seeing this offseason. So the plan is now full rebuild. And if you want to cut Eli Manning, I think that would be the smart thing to do. However, now that we know they're in full rebuild, what they probably will do is because they are are beholden to Eli Manning forever, it seems like, is they're going to hopefully draft a quarterback have an Eli farewell tour, have that year of mentorship, the Kansas City model, even though Kansas City was really damn good when they had Alex Smith as a quarterback. They'll have that, and then they'll move on. Are the Giants going to draft a quarterback? No. Well, they better now, because this is full friggin' rebuild right now. And the New York, that is the plan. The New York Giants also now have 12 draft picks. Okay, so they have four in the top 100, five in the top 110, and on top of that, they'll get a compensatory pick for the loss of Landon Collins in the offseason next year. Everybody said, oh, I didn't get anything for Landon Collins. Well, they they probably could have gotten a fourth rounder for him last year. But now they get a compensatory third rounder uh, that will be used in 2020. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's I know it's Odell Beckham Jr. I know it's a big name. I know it's like a marquee name. Everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. Everybody lo- remembers the one handed catch in a losing game against the freaking uh, uh, Dallas Cowboys. Hey, you know what? Goodbye. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out because, you know, you have created more hysteria and issues for this franchise than, you know, maybe since Lawrence Taylor. But Lawrence Taylor did live in the world of social media and didn't live in the world of, you know, access to the media the way that this kid has. Well, he was on winning teams, too. That's the other thing that helps everything around Lawrence Taylor. He was on winning teams. Right, so it's two years in a row now where they have had three losing records, two losing records back-to-back, and they haven't gotten any better. And now they're worse, I think, on paper anyway, roster-wise, until we see what they do in the draft and see what other free agents that they possibly may sign. Uh, they do pick up some salary cap relief here. They're up to, I think, about 27 or $28 million in cap room moving forward. And remember, they got the roster bonus to give Eli Manning. 
this coming Sunday for $5 million. Yeah, and I've heard, too, that, and, and I know that we have said this, that it's crazy for them to continue to be loyal to Eli Manning. But I, I have heard this idea that Dave Gettleman chose Eli Manning to build around as opposed to Odell Beckham Jr. And I disagree with that thought process. I don't believe that he chose that. I think that they know now that they're in a full rebuild. And whether or not Eli Manning is the starting quarterback next year or it's a rookie quarterback, they know they're in a full rebuild. And if they want to give Eli a farewell tour next year or they don't, I'm not even sure it's going to matter. I think that they finally turn the corner with this trade and realize we're not going to be any good next year. We're just not. So I think that we now have a general manager and a team that understands that they can't win with Eli Manning once they decide to trade Odell Beckham Jr., and we're now going to see them finally turn the page. I didn't believe that yesterday. I believe it today. I think they're going to turn the page sooner or later on Eli Manning. It's not going to be in two years, three more years. They're going to draft a guy now. I really believe that. And if they want to properly say goodbye to Eli Manning because that's important to them next year, then go ahead and do it. 